Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Bill Indiana. Today I'm going to do a board game spotlight review for First Empires. This is a game produced by Sandcastle Games and created by Eric B. Vogel. I'm going to give you a quick overview of how the game plays and my initial thoughts after a few gameplays. Uh -oh. So here you can see I have a two-player game set up. We've got yellow versus orange, and in the rule book it says that two players you're supposed to use those two colors. I'm sure it has something to do with balancing. Uh, but basically, let's just look at the yellow player and, and see the setup here. Yellow player was chosen as the first player, so they have this little tracking uh, score thing here across the top, and they will be first player through the whole game. You're going to go through eight rounds, and after the eighth round, everyone has had the same number of turns, and you're going to score up your points and the player with the most points wins. Now points are tracked in a lot of different places, but you'll always see this sort of wreath design with a number. So you can see 14, 18, 17, 13, 15, if you get to the top of those tracks. Um, and, so, and there's also points on the other sides of these tiles, but you shuffle the tiles up and so you don't know what numbers are on there. I think there's three number ones, two twos and a three, if I remember correctly, but those are face down. And then you've got one more that you put out on your capital. So Etruria is mine. So I would put one city tile out there. Again, I don't know if that's a one, two, or a three, but I'm putting it out there. Um, I'm also going to take the number of workers or explorers that this dictates. So these tracks tell you all the things you can do and how much. So I start with three workers or three explorers. So I'm going to take my three explorers and put them out on Etruria as well. So that's kind of setting myself up to begin the game. Orange player is going to do the same thing. They're going to take their other city tile and, and again they've got five of them across the top, one at the top of each track. Again unknown what the numbers are, one to three, and then the other one goes right here on Kardats to where their home region is. And then they're starting with four explorers. So these are asymmetric and so we're going to have four explorers for that region based on what their um, board says. So that's kind of the quick setup. We're also going to have each player take the number of cards that their track says. Mine says here on the green, it says so it's explorers, cards, movement, rerolls, and number of dice. So on this one, I can start with two cards. So I'm going to take two cards and I can look at them, um, but I'm going to keep them secret. This player on their card track, they only get one. So they're going to start with one card, and that's their beginning card. Now, what do the cards do? So, um, well, they can give you points at the end of the game. So the, or any time during the game you can earn them. So this one says earn five, or sorry, occupy five regions or more um, regions, five or more regions with 10 explorers. So once I have all 10 of my explorers out there and I'm in five different regions, I can take this and say, hey, I've earned this. I show it to the other players. And then I just put this down in my field and I've earned that six points. This one says occupy two islands. So there's an island here and an island there. So if I can get both those islands occupied, then I can earn two points. Now there's other things the cards do and I'll explain that here as we go. This player has a different card there. It says uh, have at least two cities on the board at the same time. So we both start with one. That's a pretty easy one to get early in the game and it would earn you three points if you're able to do it. So you're only ever going to have the number of cards in your hand that the board tells you. So I started with two and if I can move this guy up the green track then I'm going to gain a card and then gain a card and then gain a card. And so I'm only going to gain cards as I move that green little cube up the track and same for every player. That's how these tracks work. They enhance your ability to put more explorers out, to hold more cards or to, to take more cards into your hand to use, to increase your movement around the map, to increase the number of times you can re-roll the dice, and to increase the number of dice that you can roll. And in a minute I'll tell you how you move up those tracks. Now, uh, if we were starting the game, we know that Etruria is going to be the first player to go. And every time a player takes a turn, they go through the same sequence of steps. The first is going to be rolling the dice. And so uh, they're only going to roll however many it says that they're able to. So this can start with two rolls or two dice rolls, and this one can start with two as well. Um, by the way, this dice tray is just something my wife made for us. It's not something that comes with the game, as you probably can figure out. All right, so the yellow player would roll two. They got a yellow and a green. Well, the way that this works is I know that me as the yellow player, I've got two movement according to my track here. And I've got yellow and green. So a movement would be I could do one. Anytime you cross a line, that's one. Or I could do one into the ocean and two onto green there. So I could, I could go into purple. I can move however I want, but that's how the movement gets tracked in terms of number of moves. So I've got two moves. Now I've got yellow and green. So in the end of my turn, Ideally, I want to have an explorer 
in a yellow area and a green area, that's how we move up the tracks. And so right now we're so spread out, I don't really have to worry about them attacking me or and they're not gonna have to worry about me attacking them initially. And this might be a little bit easier region for me to protect. And so since I wanna be in green anyway, I'm gonna use my two movement and go one into the ocean and two onto the island. That also might help me eventually to reach this occupy two islands goal that I have here in my hand that only I know about. All right, so I've used my two move, I've rolled my dice. I could have re-rolled, but I got a yellow and a green. I got exactly what I wanted. And so I didn't need to use my one reroll. Then I used my two movement. The next thing to consider is if you're moving in a way that's going to conquest another character, you take care of that. I'll explain that here in just a couple minutes. And then afterwards you advance. So now I look at my dice, I'm in yellow and I'm in green with my explorers. So I'm gonna go up on the green track and I'm gonna go up on the yellow track. Now on the green track, that means I get to draw another card. This one says raise your blue track by two in one turn. If I do that, I'm gonna earn five points. So the way I could raise my track by two, my blue track by two, I would have to have, say it's a later state in the game, I would have to have two, or you know, at least one explorer in each of the two blue regions, and I would have had to have rolled two separate dice. Because you have to have a die and an explorer in the region of the matching color in order to move up the track twice. You can't just have two explorers in one region and count both of those. You have to have a separate explorer and a separate die for each region in order to move up the tracks. But if I could get spread to both blue and accomplish that, it would earn me five points if I'm able to do that on the turn. And then again, anytime during your turn that you accomplish these, you just show the card and say, hey, I, I accomplished this, turn it face up, and it's going to be your guaranteed points at the end of the game. All right, so let me take these back off here. And so that's basically a turn. You roll the dice. If you want, you can re-roll. If you want, you can move. If you have the opportunity to, you can do a conquer conquest opportunity, um, and then you advance up the tracks. Now, the other advancement on my track is I went up the yellow, which now means I can have five explorers. So I'm going to take two more explorers, and I'm going to put them on any region that I already occupy. And so I'm going to go ahead and put them in Etruria. They'll be a little bit easier for me to spread out from there than they would be from over here in Albion in the corner. And that would be the yellow player's turn. Then the green player goes and does the same thing. So the green player can roll two dice. We take these off the board. That's just to help kind of visualize what's going on. They get orange and blue. Well, they are in orange and they could go to blue just like I did, but uh, just for, uh, say, for fun, let's try a one here. Let's do our one reroll. Let's keep the orange because we know we're in orange. And let's hopefully we can get a yellow or a green here. Hopefully green. Okay, we didn't get a green. We got a, a sword. Now, swords are only used in conquest. Um, so at right at this point, I only have one reroll. That's all I could do as the orange player, except one of the ways you can use these cards, if you don't think that you're going to be able to get this or you just aren't willing to try to work for it at the time or it might take you too long to get it, you can at this point discard a card to turn any of these into a sword. So if I really wanted to maximize my conquest on the turn, I could say I'm going to discard this and turn this one to a sword as well. Um, so every card you discard allows you to turn one die to a sword during this phase of rolling and re-rolling. Now, in this case, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, and the sword doesn't help me because I'm not close enough to have a battle with the yellow character. Uh, but let's say that instead, just for fun, uh, let's say that I was lucky and I rolled an orange and a green. All right, so, uh, and then this player has the one re-roll which we demonstrated, and then they've also got two movement to start the game. Now, let's say they went to green here because that's their orange and their green and let's say they go to yellow so just crossing one crossing one that's their two movement so they've rolled they've re-rolled they've done their move we're not in a position where we can conquest it at this point because they've used up their movement and now they're in green and orange so for being in orange they're going to move up the orange track and that means next time they're going to get to roll three dice they're also going to move up the green track which gets them another card and this one says occupy two yellow regions if they're able to do that on and at a given point in the game at the same time Four points. So now they got two cards in hand. So that's the flow of the game. Now let's explain this whole conquering conquest. So let's go back to the yellow player's turn. They can still only roll two dice because they weren't able to go up the orange track. So they roll two and they get blue and blue. Well, they're not on any blue and they don't really need to go to blue. So let's have them use their reroll and see if they can do something a little bit better. Blue and purple. All right. Um, so they've still just got two movements. But let's say that instead of getting into blue and purple, which wouldn't really be highly strategic at this point, but I'll show you why it could still work in a minute. Um, they decide they're going to use their two movements to take these two across that white line. That's two movements, one for each explorer. And they're going to conquer 
this one orange player that's in Indus, because you have to have more in your um, in the region, or you have to have equal with swords, or you can use swords. Every sword die that you add increases your explorers by one. So I could use those if I had rolled some, but I didn't. So I'm just going to move two in. Now, you don't ever lose your explorers. So it's not a real take that game. You just retreat them. And they don't even have to retreat to an adjacent territory. They just have to retreat to a territory where you have um, explorers already. So let's say they decided to retreat there. They can't go to an empty territory. It has to be one where you already have explorers. All right, now the downside is I did conquer, and so I've, I've spread out, but, and they retreated, so that's to demonstrate conquering, but I'm not in blue or purple. Now this wouldn't be a very wise move for me, but another way you can use these cards is you can also discard cards to change the color of the dice at this phase of the game. So one way at the rolling and re-rolling phase, you can use it to flip over to a sword, and now at the end of the phase when you're doing the the movement part now you and you're getting ready for advancement now you can discard two and you discard them, they go out of the game every player has nine cards and you're only going to ever have a chance to play seven so discarding cards isn't that big a deal you're probably not always going to get all seven cards in hand anyway but you want to make sure you discard the cards that aren't easy for you to achieve and so if i discarded those then i could change this to green and i could change this to green again if i wanted to because now i've got two in green and so discarding two cards, I could change them both. I'm two in green, and I could go up two on the green track. I just discarded two cards, so then I could go one, two for this one and this one. And that would get me two more cards in hand since I just discarded two. So hopefully that gives you a flavor for how the game goes. You keep going every time it comes back to the first player, they move the tracker up. So play a turn, play a turn, now we're on round two. Play a turn, play a turn, now we're on round three. And you just go after the end of round eight, you add up all the points from the cards that you've accomplished during the flow of the game, from the points you have on these tracks. And then the last way to get points is through the cities. So you can, when you conquer, potentially take over someone else's city. And so let's say we're a couple turns down the road and we've uh, maybe back here, they have these two and I have these two here and I wanna to try to come in and conquer their city. And let's say that I, I rolled a, a red or a, a a uh, sword and an orange, you know, just for argument's sake. So I, it's two on two, so I can't conquer them, except I have this. So I can move in if I have two movements, and then use this as my third one. Now it's three to two. They would have to retreat, and then I would take their city token. Now I can't look at what the point total is on it yet, but I get that, and it can't be taken from me. So I'm going to score those points for stealing their city token at the end of the game. Now, it's it's going to be impossible not to keep all your city tokens, or maybe not impossible, but I would say it's virtually impossible to keep all your city tokens um, because you're going to be slowly putting them out over the game. And how do you put them out over the game? Well, as you move up the tracks, you can see uh, for this character, I think I moved the wrong one when I went up green. <laughs> it should have been this one. So I went one and two on this one. Um, and then when I reach or pass this, that means I'm going to put, it has a little red emblem on it. Uh, there's one here, one here, there's one in every track. When I reach or pass that, I'm going to take this city and I'm going to put it out somewhere where I have um, explorers so I can put it there. And now that's another city for me to try to maintain till the end of the game. It's also another city for the opponents to try to conquer and steal for points at the end of the game. Now at the end of the game, if I still possess them, if they haven't been stolen, then I am going to take them and I am going to score them. But you only score your own cities at the end of the game, so you have to somehow keep them from being stolen throughout. And so that is how you would score it at the end of the game. Your cards, your track totals, the total of any city tiles that you still maintain of your own or any that you've stolen of the opponents during the game, and whoever has the most points wins. So that's a quick overview of how the game plays. Now let me tell you my reflections. I really like the track movement of this and being strategic. Uh, there is a bit of luck because you may not be able to roll the dice colors that you need to move up the track you need because obviously you want to try to get up this orange track early to be able to roll more dice and you want to get up the yellow track early so you can put more explorers out on the board so that you can do more conquering and you also want to move up the movement track so you can do more moving. I would say the re-rolls and the cards aren't necessarily as important early unless you need to throw away some of those cards to get swords to conquer or throw away some of those cards to switch the dice to a different color so that you can move up the tracks then you might need to. So as the game progresses, you might be shifting where you want to focus. And because you can discard the cards to gain swords to improve your ability to conquer and to switch the dice to a different color at the end of your turn when you're starting advancement, you can be pretty strategic about which tracks you're moving up 
And obviously it's a pretty slow increment initially. It's 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, and then 17. <laughs> 0, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, and then 15. You know, so you're not going to be able to move up all the tracks all the way. Um, and so you're going to have to decide, okay, which ones am I focusing on? Which ones am I getting rolls for? And you're kind of being a little bit tactical throughout the game. The other thing I really like about this game is that even though it's combative, you don't ever lose your characters. They just move to another territory. And in fact, I had a play in the last game where I got beat and they did steal my city title. But because I could remove those back to any single territory as a retreat, and it didn't even have to be adjacent, I moved them to one of my territories that was right beside two of another character's territories. And so even though I got beat, got conquested or conquered, I moved over and it put me in a strategic position where on the next turn, I was able to move and conquer two of another player's cities. And I happened to have a card in my hand that said, if you could conquer two cities in one turn, then you earn those victory points. So being moved actually helped me. Yeah, I lost one city token, but you know you're going to lose some during the game. But it helped me actually gain a card and two more cities. So it's, it's not a real bad feeling necessarily when your city gets taken all the time. It feels bad the first time, and then you realize, I'm going to lose some of these cities anyway, and if I can just maintain a couple, and if I can take some of theirs, so it's very strategic. Another thing that's pretty interesting about this game, and it took me a while to wrap my brain around it because of my years of playing Risk, um, you can move through the water, and going into the water is just one move. So I could go from here, one into the water, and then all the way over to here as a second move. So that you can get across the board pretty quickly if you use it strategically. Now on the other side of the board, I'll, I'll show you this real quick so you can see how it's a little different if you're playing with more players. Um, and a couple things about how they've designed this with for more players. There are also some white lines. And so again, moving into the ocean is one move, but also going over a white line as one. So they've got a white line here and here and here. So I couldn't just go here and into the ocean and then all the way over to here. It'd be here, into the ocean, across the line, and then in. So it takes a little bit more movement in this regard with giving that little line across the middle of the board. So they did, you know, scale it a little bit that way. And you can see, again, more thoroughly what the board looks like for three to five players there. Uh, so I love the fact that it is combative in a sense, but it doesn't feel that bad when you lose, when you get conquered. And sometimes it even sets you up for a better move. I like moving up the tracks and trying to strategically decide, you know, when and where to move up the tracks and when and where to get the cities. And honestly, you might want to consider waiting and putting your cities out later in the game because they're less likely to get stolen. If you're putting all your cities out early before we get close to that eight round end, they're probably going to, many of them, get stolen. So you have to decide pretty strategically. You can try to, to protect, but if people want to either luckily roll these swords, they don't even have to have as many people as you have. And if they can roll five dice and they've got cards or they get lucky and roll a bunch of swords or they got cards to flip some over to swords, you know, they could have two people and five swords. They could bring seven in and it's hard to defend a city when people can use a lot of swords or either by luck or by discarding cards to get them. So uh, lots of little interesting strategic decision points to make. And it's a simple game, really pretty easy to learn, and it plays pretty quick. We played a three-player game in, I think, a half an hour, and that was even with the teach. Um, and then I played a two-player game in under a half an hour with the teach. So it's, it's a nice, snappy game. I, I could see how some players might suffer a little bit of AP trying to decide, oh, do I want to go here? Do I want to go there? Do I want to conquer? How do I need to protect? But with the games I've played so far, we haven't really had that as an issue, but I could see it possibly being something to consider. So that is my quick overview and brief review of First Empires by Sandcastle Games and Eric V. Vogel. Just played it a few times so far, but really looking forward to getting more plays out of it. And so far, everyone that I've played it with has instantly said, I might buy this game. Uh, it's just got something about it. It's, it's a little bit like that Risk feel for those of us that played that a lot growing up. And yet it doesn't drag on like Risk. And it's not just rolling dice and then hoping you get better numbers than them. You can manipulate the dice. There's just there's a lot of more Yuri type of gaming here that goes on that I think has really intrigued the people that I've been able to play it with. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and it helped you understand a bit about the game First Empires. If you did enjoy it, I would love it if you would choose to give it a thumbs up down below and it'd be great if you'd also subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below and I'd be glad to answer them. As always, thanks for watching. This is Bill Indiana, signing off. Oh.